everybody hey everyone welcome to god's storms channel um if you're a returning subscriber child you're a real one if it's your first time here this is god star that's me that's the name of the channel that's the name of all of this um our focus is to build a constellation of stars people are gonna go out there represent christ well reflect the nature of the kingdom of god and just be about our father's business you know what i mean yeah this is episode two episode two of the gate series and today we're looking at feet gate as you all know if you've been here if you've this is your first episode in fact go to the others um the one before this and the introduction will really lay the foundation and follow through till this very episode today we're looking at feet gates let's get right into it and see what the word of god says about it the theme scripture Proverbs 4 verses 23 to 27 but today's episode will be mainly focusing on the last two verses which is verse 26 and 27 it reads let's start from 25 in fact to set the tone you know that's what 26 and 27 makes sense 25 set your gaze on the path before you with a fixed purpose looking straight ahead ignoring life's distractions we're reading from the passion translation rather. 26 watch where you're going stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you eh? watch where you're going stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you 27 don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness don't allow yourself to be sidetracked even for a moment as I was studying this, um, I first looked up the definition of sidetracking, you know, just to understand. Sidetracking, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is to cause someone to be distracted or divert. De definition two, to wander from a direct or straight course, right? And synonyms for the word sidetrack are to depart, to digress, or to drift. And all of these synonyms are causes of us being sidetracked. Yeah? Yeah. Why I want to link verses 25 first is that it makes sense because in the common sense eyes and feet go hand in hand in a way you are most probably gonna go where your eyes are fixed most probably i don't know what statistics say like the percentages but if we are speaking logically you're most probably gonna go where your eyes are fixed what we can conclude is if you follow rule verse 25 of fixing your gaze on jesus then rule 26 and 27 will most probably be taken care of. Let's refer to Matthew chapter 14 verses 28 to 31. Matthew 14, 28 to 31. It reads, and Peter said to him, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? But what I want to highlight in this passage of scripture is the verse 29 and 28. Right. If we imagine it, Peter in a boat, fixing his eyes on Jesus, he then, you know, had faith and all of that. But then he walked towards him to back up the fact that you're really most probably going to go where your eyes are fixed but relating to the eyes and the feet even going to the right places not fixing your eyes on jesus chat that is where the danger is that is where the danger is even for example going to church if that day like this is something i realized as well it's so much different going to the house of the lord fixing your eyes on him you know understanding that you're here for him to have an encounter with him understanding that you want to hear him speak to you it's more intimate rather than you're probably in worship or you're in praise and you're focusing more on your dancing rather than you're focusing on the words and what you are lifting up to him if you're gonna be there and look at who's doing what and who's wearing what or maybe even yourself you thought like you smashed this outfit and you're looking all hard and stuff and you know like those days where you're just feeding yourself a little too much and think everyone should be looking to you yeah we all go through that well at least me <laughs> but you just gotta get your heart right and these are all distractions these are all things that drift our focus and sidetrack us from you know fixing our eyes on jesus such that we may draw closer to him and have that intimate relationship even when going to the right places in the house of the lord but child you that's it that is it you will leave that building the same because 
you know not just church but any fellowship gathering be it your home cell be it um your prayer meetings or whatever it is let jesus be the center i mean i know we say this quite a lot but intentionally letting jesus be the center and fixing your eyes on him because your feet may be going right but your heart remember the first verse verse 23 where's my scripture verse 23 says above all got the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are so yeah yeah right right so on that note um i just strongly believe there are certain places as as children of god um pursuing god have no business going absolutely no business going i want to believe that god is very much aware of the wicked world that we live in sinful world that we are you know everything is wow right but the intentionality where is your heart in all of this and what are you doing about it even if you can you know there are certain situations we can't avoid but to an extent really i had this one friend actually um i was trying to bring him to christ it's actually a friend y'all it's actually a friend don't think because i know like those conversations that we might have like oh i dated somebody who was in the world and i thought i was gonna bring him to christ child he was just a friend so i'm inviting him casually you know study together Jay, go to class, right? Like a friend in Helen Jashane, and that's it. <laughs> so, I casually invite this person. Oh, would you love to come with me to church today? I don't know. Um, would you love to invite him, you know, to like the weekly fellowships that we have or where I think he'll engage more and write? And what is the response? Arnie, if you want me to come with you to church, you gotta first come with me. To groove mind you he doesn't even groove i was just trying to sidetrack me and i'm like boy you're playing <laughs> you are playing because what are you saying it's not gonna work like that we don't work like that baby so um as much as the intention was right because me going to this place equals him going to this place which is the end goal i wasn't it would be wrong to forget that I'm an ambassador of Christ and I am out here trying to represent this God and people I'm probably evangelizing to now are seeing me in this like you know like it's it's not me it's not make sure it's not making sense right knowing the fact that music being played the atmosphere is not right like child <laughs> lest I'm trying to grieve the Holy Spirit and cater to the flesh really that would not have been a wise move to do actually there's a scripture let me find it got it first Samuel 16 verses 23 it says and whenever the harmful spirit from god was upon Saul, david took the liar 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 not sure the pronunciation um david took the liar and played it with his hand so Saul was refreshed and was well and the harmful spirit departed from him what i get from this is the fact that there are certain spirits that try that they thrive in certain atmospheres david started playing this instrument of his and in that atmosphere that was created the harmful evil spirit could not survive could not live in that particular surrounding so it left so same with um you know you, you get it but atmosphere is like a topic for another day really that's like an entire sermon i also have another relative who in her family everybody everyone from the father to the last born they are all I mean, you know those people where they're like, oh no, we know God is there, but child, they're just not living the life, right? Secular music and everybody's drinking, some of them are smoking. Um, it was, you know, a, a grievous place to be, really, to the Holy Spirit. Like, growing your faith in that atmosphere was hard, biological family. What did she do? She packed her bags and she went to stay with a family member who is you know on the same track as she is on use has the same goals and what and what so that she may grow spiritually and in all other aspects really so as much as it may look like it's a situation she cannot avoid because it's her biological family with a biological mother and a biological father and her biological siblings to an extent you really can do something you know i won't give all kind of scenarios but the intentionality of your walk with christ one last example actually we go to the read dance me and my sisters and relatives and random strangers right and it was a thing where that was my first time going to this particular place it's like a three-day camp of some sort so then on one of the days it's known that it's going down and i'm like i'm not going down with y'all no thank you um so 
they left right i never knew so i'm going with them and i'm seeing all these funny stuff starting to happen i'm like yeah i'm leaving so i'm now trying to pull with me my closest of the sisters i have a really really large extended family so i'm now trying to pull the close of my sisters who's like my age we relate with each other a lot um we do quite a lot of things together and i'm like child we don't want to be here let's go we are from protect families we do not do this <sighs> did i not find excuses did i not find her already shaking you know and I, I i went to my room well not mainly my room but the place where we are staying the hut where we were staying i cried myself to sleep i cried not because i felt like i was missing out but i cried because <laughs> my sister <laughs> why is she doing that like it, you gain nothing you really gain nothing absolutely nothing so even in that it was my first experience um i wanna have fun i wanna come back with stories but not i wasn't even that like close enough. i was saved but i really wasn't walking the walk like i was supposed to so i was still struggling with like circular music and excuse me all those but the intentionality once again it is critical it is crucial it is essential it is what are those other words yeah you're gonna add those other juicy fancy so-called words that are synonyms of how important and weighty it is and how it could really just impact you and your walk with christ so with all intentionality that is within us we should as much as possible choose places that will edify us and protect us and our souls from self-imposed temptation even you know walking away from situations that you probably walked yourself into really maybe blinded or intentionality i need to find a definition for this word what is to be intentional give me a second got it intentionality according to oxford dictionary intentional means to do something on purpose or deliberately right deliberate okay. um synonyms deliberate calculated conscious purposeful premeditated pre-planned pre-arranged pre determined and many more <laughs> for real for real it's from eyes to ears to feet to tongue which we're getting to in a moment <sighs> you just gotta be intentional you gotta be deliberate about everything about everything so in conclusion um we see lot in genesis 13 you're gonna read the story on your own but um if i remember well he was somebody who he was with his uncle abraham right so now they had to part ways and abraham was like okay lord um gaze on the land and see which direction you're gonna take if you're gonna take west i'm taking east if you're gonna take north i'm gonna take south right the really so abraham allows his nephew to you know be the first one to choose lot looked with his eye gates and i have no idea what he saw but with what he saw he went with all that he had and little did he know he was walking into destruction he went into the jordan valley that's sort of what gomorrah is so is his uncle his uncle also looked but the difference now is that he followed rule verse 25 and had fixed his eyes on the great shepherd who he trusted would lead him into greener pastures and the path of righteousness and all of these so you get it it, it also speaks to not leading on your own understanding in this particular case to say you are seeing all this beauty you are seeing just as lord did like he thought i won here with the jordan valley but not really son not really rather than abraham who had set his eyes on on, on god to lead him into the land that he was being sent into so really that's that i think at the end of the day it's intentionality don't go to places that you don't belong don't go to places that jesus wouldn't go you know we say this so casually but really think about it where jesus wouldn't go don't not that you're avoiding sinners but you're avoiding certain places that are going to create the spirit of god but rather go to places that will be to the edification and to the protection of yourself and your soul such that you may protect your heart and your soul just as rule 23 right just as rule verse 23 says um i think that is it for the feet gate yeah thank you so much for tuning in um don't forget to finish off this series with the tank gate which might be a conviction for a lot of y'all right um our goal is to grow in the spirit to walk in um the path that god has marked out for us and just be the lights of the world just as the constellations that we are the stars that we are right so yeah thank you all for tuning in 